You cannot have it both ways. People who advocate for us speaking in tongues, and I mean the way that we hear nowadays, they, they, they have, I don't think they have a really good defense, but in this one, I would love to hear their arguments because you simply cannot have it both ways. You'll tell us that there is a such thing as speaking in tongues, and then there's a such thing as praying in tongues. So we never see any example. Matter of fact, we never see an example of speaking in tongues that we see today, but fine, I digress. But we never see an example of someone praying in tongues. But what about Paul? Paul said, if I do, if a person prays in tongues, what is the result or what's the solution? He, he doesn't say turn back and pray in tongues again. He says, uh, pray in the spirit, pray with understanding so that you'll know. I want you to know. I want you to understand what's happening. And I want the audience around you to happen. But they'll say, well, there's only a need for an interpreter if you are speaking in tongues. Not if you're praying in tongues, but what if you're praying in tongues in public? And so we've got this little dilemma here that they're going to have to respond to. They're going to have to give us an actual answer as to what's happening here. Is he speaking in tongues or is he praying in tongues? And what makes this interesting is there is an interpreter there, but not an interpreter for the tongues. The next year is going to be a different season. Come on, on the balcony in the first floor. La balcon, aici, la parter, Close your eyes, pray the Holy Ghost. And and there will be a shift in your finances. Now this is Vlad Savchuk, and he's saying, uh, he's saying, he's pronouncing a lot of things uh, that there will be a shift. We'll talk about these different things that he's pronouncing on the people, but he says to pray in the Holy Ghost, ladies and gentlemen. Pray in the Holy Ghost or pray in the Spirit does not mean to do so in tongues. When we see this term, this phrase, in the Spirit or in the Holy Ghost, it has never meant in tongues. If that were the case, all of the times that we see it in the Scripture, has no, it has nothing to do with tongues. As a matter of fact, even if they say go to Jude 20, which has nothing to do, one, with spiritual gifts, it just says that uh, you yourselves uplift others. But even if you think that you're supposed to build up yourself, fine. It's not a spiritual gift. We're not talking about any, any spiritual gift. And we're certainly not talking about in tongues. And so he says, build yourselves up in the most Holy Ghost. Uh, that doesn't mean tongues. That did, did, did David walk in tongues when he says he walked in the power of the Holy Ghost? Or Paul, that he came in the in the, in the power of the Spirit or in the Spirit? Does that mean that he did something in, in tongues? No. But you want to make something fit? Fine. So uh, what does that mean? This is Vlad Sadrick. Notice the the ship. Now he's got the, he's got an interpreter there with him, and we're gonna have a problem real soon with what he's doing. Shift in your walk in God. Come on, come on. Don't now wait for a feeling to hit you right now. Just pray in my faith. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Lord, I believe in the word that was released today. I believe that you're preparing for the change of clothes in my life. For the shift in the Holy Ghost. For the change of clothes in my life. For the shift in my ministry. 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 Offering these things, he's declaring these things, he's whatever. Uh, is he praying or is he speaking? Someone will have to help me out. Do, what do you all think? Do you think he's praying here or do you think he's speaking? Now, he's telling them to pray in the Holy Ghost. He's telling them, he's telling them what's going to happen. So it doesn't seem like that he's praying. So let's let's keep that in mind. We've got to figure out which one is he doing because either way, we're going to have a problem. For a shift in my dominion. For a shift in my finances. I'm going to a higher level of consecration. I'm going to a greater level of God's provision. In Jesus' name, I'll receive your word. Okay, so maybe he is praying. Okay, fine. Let's just let's take that. Let's just say he's praying. Okay. Well, then if you're praying, then why are you then while you're praying, giving instructions to the other people? And then you're praying and you've got, you're telling people to pray, but then you've got someone interpreting you praying. Well, so now it seems that he that he's not praying. Now he's telling them, "Come on, y'all, because the the next year will be different." So he's not praying to God. He's he's talking to them. In Jesus' name. Thing you 
stepping into is going to be different. Lucrul în care pășești următor va fi diferit. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Haideți să ne rugăm. Continuăm să te rugăm. Schimbe în atmosferă. Ceva urmează să se schimbe în tărâmul Duhului. Ceva urmează să se schimbe în familia ta. Ceva urmează să se schimbe în Duhul tău. Push! You should not ever um, impose something on God to tell them or to tell them. I, are you saying that God is saying that something's about to shift? If that's the case, and all those people who months and months ago, this is almost a year ago, they should be able to come back and say, hey, uh, what you said, what you prophesied, what you spoke over us, that didn't happen. Remember, we're told our guiding principle is to do this. According to what Paul says, not to exceed what was or what is written and you're doing things you're coming up with things all these different ways of doing things and so forth that is not in the text you are literally exceeding what is written but back to what, what he's doing there's a problem here he is speaking english and she's interpreting for them remember she's interpreting for them what he's saying pray until something Continua happens să te rogi come on pray in the ceva. holy ghost until Roagă something happens Kira babale ramana kita la manala bara la mana kita ra bara li bara la moson. We got a problem. Now he goes to tongues, and the interpreter is left there. What does she do? What what can she do now? Is he is he speaking in tongues, or is he praying in tongues? That's the question, and this is where I would like to have an answer because I've got a reply. Is he speaking in tongues, or is he praying in tongues? And every time that we look at the Bible be it 1 Corinthians 14 or be it 1 Corinthians 12, every time we see these, we see the word that's used there. We see this glossize alone. And so every time or uh, some derivation of it, that's what we keep seeing. And even when someone says, well, no, that part in 1 Corinthians is praying in tongues, but it's still the same exact two words, lalain or laleo or lalone, glossize. So the same two words that are used but they mean two different things. Well, my question is fine. What is he doing? What is Vlad Satrick doing? Is he praying in tongues or is he speaking in tongues? <laughs> repeating the same little syllables over and over again that should be a red flag but that being the case then he goes to english are you so what do you are you what, what's the issue and if you're praying why is she interpreting that if you're speaking in tongues why isn't she why isn't she interpreting that well no i'm i'm, I'm praying in tongues well why are you going back from tongues to english tongues to english what's the point of you going to english is it so that you can understand or so that they can understand what What's the difference? And then why why is she interpreting your prayers? There who can interpret what you're doing. She's she's now fine. She's doing her job to interpret what you're saying. People who can't understand you. That's the same problem that you have when you're doing these tongues that even you yourself don't understand. Let's just be clear about that. But then the other people don't. And so you literally have an interpreter who can't interpret what you're saying because what you're saying, one, doesn't make any sense, any spiritual sense, any godly sense. So my question is, what are you doing? Are you speaking in tongues? And those are going to defend him. Well, you can't interpret those tongues because he's not speaking in tongues there. But what is he doing? Well, he's praying. We don't interpret prayers. Well, since when? When does the Bible say not to interpret that? Where? Where is that at? Where does the Bible say not to have understanding? In 1 Corinthians 14, Paul says that if a person were to pray in tongues, or if I pray in tongues, what shall I do? What will be the outcome? What's the solution? He says, I will pray with my mind. I'll pray in the spirit and I'll pray with my mind, with understanding. He, didn't have, he, didn't, he has no clue what he's saying, nor does anyone else, which is why he goes back to the English, because he understands that these folks are sitting there listening to me with his interpreter And maybe these people, maybe maybe they get the idea that I'm speaking something other than what they think, which I know I'm pretty sure they don't think that he's speaking English. And so the interpreter is at a loss. You have no interpreter, even when there's an interpreter there, which tells us those tongues are not authentic tongues of the Holy Spirit. If someone disagrees, then please, I would love to hear by all means, someone please explain to me what we just saw. Tell me and then give me a biblical verse to go with 
what we just understood, what we just saw, and tell us why our plain understanding of the English or the Greek of these texts, why it doesn't fit with what he's doing. Is there some sort of extra revelation that we need to tap into? Please help us out. Mm -hmm.